This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for April 19, 2023, search on four gunmen following deadly attack in Clarendon. The police are searching for two gunmen following an attack which left one man dead and another injured in Maypen Clarendon on Monday night. The deceased has been identified as Lucian Beckford, a 25-year-old laborer of Evans Street in Denby Clarendon. Reports state that about 8.15 p.m., four people were at an establishment on Evans Street when two armed men entered. The gunmen fired shots sending the patrons running in different directions. The gunmen then escaped. Beckford's body was later found with what appeared to be gunshot wounds. The injured person was taken to hospital and admitted. St. Catherine's selector killed in road crash. A music selector was killed while riding a motorcycle along St. John's Road in St. Catherine on Tuesday evening. He has been identified by his alias Smokey and is reportedly of a Spanish town address. It's reported that about 6 p.m., Smokey was riding his motorcycle along the roadway when he lost the control of the vehicle and crashed into a truck and a motor car. He was hit from the motorbike and died from the multiple injuries he received. DPP wants the victims of sexual abuse to come forward. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn has asserted that the sentencing of a 72-year-old man 30 years after he sexually assaulted a female relative is an indication that her office can successfully prosecute similar cases once the information is forthcoming. She is therefore appealing to other victims of sexual abuse to come forward. The man was sentenced to nearly five years in prison last week in the St. Mary Circuit Court. Ms. Llewellyn, speaking Tuesday with the news, said her department takes complaints of these in nature seriously. The first incident occurred in 1993 when the complainant was seven years old and was teen with her grandmother while her mother was at work. The man again assaulted the child in 1999 when she and the two minor relatives went to his house. The complainant first reported the matter in 2013 at the age of 27. The woman, who is now 36, gave evidence that she took action when she became aware that she could still report the crime, despite the time which had passed. She said she had been previously urged by relatives not to report the incidents. It really again showed that the genre referred to as historical sexual abuse, that we can successfully prosecute it. We have done a few, and in fact we have a locus classicus in Jamaica that was dealt with in the Constitutional Division of the Supreme Court. That is Patrick Chung and the Attorney General of Jamaica and the Director of Public Prosecutions. And that really upheld the fact that it is alive and well in Jamaica. And not only that, I would hope that for those who are in family situations, or are not in family situations, but they have access to young girls and they betray the trust, I would hope that knowing that this can happen in terms of the criminal law, that it acts as a prevention. Make a greater use of restorative justice across the Caribbean, Chuck urges. Jamaica's Justice Minister Delroy Chuck is urging Caribbean citizens to use restorative justice as a tool to settle disputes instead of resorting to violence. Noting that restorative justice has been a success in resolving disagreements and de-escalating conflicts, Mr. Chuck said an extension of the measure across the region could help to reduce violent crimes. Mr. Chuck is speaking virtually on the topic, community approaches at the Regional Symposium on Violence as a public health issue in Trinidad and Tobago, said in many instances, minor disputes escalate to violence. He said Jamaica started to actively collect and track data originating from the Restorative Justice Program in 2018 and that the success rate of restorative justice conferences averaged more than 80% annually. Mr. Chuck said two more restorative justice centers will be established in Jamaica, bringing the total across the island to 22. 
He lamented the fact that although there are 1,000 trained restorative justice facilitators in Jamaica, their services are underutilized. If relationships can be restored by RJ before they descend into criminal violence, and sometimes even after violence has been used, then RJ can be deemed a remedial success with significant curative value being derived by not only the participants, but the communities that would otherwise have been impacted by continued cycles of violence and by extension, the country at large. SSB Josephs wants a GCF to target schools for recruits. With the Jamaica Constabulary Forces ongoing recruitment drive not yielding the desired results, Senior Superintendent of Police Wynne Josephs, Commander for the West Marlanda Police Division, wants the initiative to be taken into the nation's schools in the hope of attracting students. Speaking at the presentation ceremony for the recently concluded West Marlanda Primary School Cricket Competition, Josephs urged teachers to encourage students to consider a career in the GCF. As for the GCF, we are having challenges getting persons to come forward to apply, so I want the teachers to know that they can invite us into schools and we can tell you about the career paths in the GCF, he said. Josephs also pointed out that policing is much more than what they see on a day-to-day -day basis, such as police officers doing traffic duties or arresting persons for crimes. The GCF is so diverse. There are so many departments within the GCF that you would not know. We have the cybercrime unit, we have the fraud unit, we have the counterterrorism unit, we have the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, we have the major investigation division. We have many departments within the force, so you can consider it an option also when you are considering a career path, said Josephs. Josephs said the police fully support events that students are involved in, as well as their schools and other educational institutions because it allows them to instill positive values and steer students away from gangs and other negative distractions. The police support any initiative like the cricket competition because with the emerging of gangs in schools and all other types of distractions that are in schools nowadays, it is things like these sports and music that can help to keep the children occupied and steer them in a positive direction, said Josephs. In recent years, West Rowland has become notorious for the number of students who have dropped out of school to become gangsters and active participants in illicit schemes such as the lottery scam and the drug smuggling. Some schools and the sporting bodies in West Rowland have lost the prominent student athletes to criminal underworld as get-rich-quick schemes continue to flourish in western Jamaica. Sadly, many of the youngsters who have been lured into nefarious activities end up being killed in gangland violence. In January, Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson said that the GCF recruited approximately 1,260 constables in the year 2021 to 2022. He said that the organization will be seeking to recruit a similar number for the 2022-2023 period. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.